Welcome to the onboard video training of Carco. This video will highlight the common observations by vetting inspectors when auditing the mooring arrangements as per Chapter 9 of the Vessel Inspection Questionnaire. One of the first observations when the vetting inspector arrives at the mooring station are the mooring ropes being used on board. The common observations with respect to mooring ropes are The mooring ropes are in poor condition with frayed and split strands. The synthetic mooring ropes are of nylon or polypropylene as against the recommended one of polyester mix. The mooring ropes wrongly round on the split drums with more than one layer of turns as against the recommended procedure of one layer of turn only. The incorrect direction of reeling of the mooring ropes on the winches as against the normal recommended procedure of reeling against the fixed point of the winch in most of the cases. The tails are wrongly connected to the wires via the Mandel or Tonsberg shackles. The correct way of connecting the Tonsberg shackle with the straight fixed pin will have the synthetic rope attached to it and the curved section will have the wire rope. In case of Mandel shackle, it is reverse with the wire being attached to the roller pin and the synthetic rope to the curved section. The eyes of the mooring tails should have a protective sheath. However, a leather sheath is not allowed. The number of tucks at the eye of the mooring lies and tails are less than the recommended number of minimum five tucks. More than three wires are broken in any strand or more than five wires are broken in two adjacent strands. The damaged wire is still in use. This needs to be removed and spliced at this point. Ropes of different strengths and types are in use, what is called using mixed moorings, which is not permitted. This could be use of wire ropes and synthetic ropes in the same mooring system. Synthetic ropes of different material in the same system, such as nylon and polyester blend. Ropes of different strengths, that is, breaking stresses, are in use in the same system. The mooring ropes are wound on a single bit instead of a figure of eight on two bit. The mooring ropes are not sharing equal weight in the same direction. The mooring ropes are wound on the warping drums, which is not permitted. The gears have been left engaged in the winch as against the recommended procedure of keeping the gear disengaged when the mooring ropes are deployed and brake tightened. The mooring ropes have been left sprawling on deck presenting a tripping hazard. The mooring winches will also be checked for the following. Brake lining is not excessively worn out. The 
Foundations are not excessively corroded. The brake hinge pins not too worn out. The brake adjustment screw may be fully tightened, indicating the wear out of the brake lining. The markings on the winches, which would include direction of winding of mooring ropes, brake rendering setting, direction of the engaging, disengaging of the gear. The pedestal fair leads and roller fair leads will be checked to ensure they are well greased and are free to turn. All the mooring equipments need to be marked with SWL. This needs to be in burst with a weld beading and stenciling alone is not accepted. The anchoring windlass condition, along with the stoppers and cable, to be checked same in satisfactory condition. The stoppers should be lowered in position when alongside the berth. The arrangements for the emergency towing will be checked in the forward and the aft area to ensure they are correctly rigged. The forward ETA should be ready to be rigged in less than one hour. The bow stopper arrangement should have its SWL and serial number clearly marked. The aft ETA should also be checked that it is ready to be deployed at short notice of 15 minutes. For a ship built after 1st of July 2002, the towing arrangements should be capable of rapid deployment and at least one of the ETAs will be pre-rigged for rapid deployment. The emergency towing wires, or fire wires as they are commonly known, will be checked that they are correctly deployed. There are two ways of rigging the fire wire. The correct one may be known from the local terminal regulations. The first and preferred way would be to lower the fire wire to the water line with no slack being kept on the deck between the fair lead and the bit around which the fire wire is wound. The eye is kept out of the water by using a messenger line leading from the eye to the deck above. The second way would be to keep the eye out of the water as shown earlier, but keeping a slack on deck between the fair lead and the bit. A small line is used to prevent this slack from running out during normal operations. The inspector will also check that the handling area at the mooring station is provided with an anti-skid surface. The following documents will be checked by the inspector when checking the records. The test certificates of the mooring ropes along with their locations as per company records. The test certificate of the ETA equipment. The test certificate of the bow chain stoppers, along with their periodical survey check every five years. The test certificate of the fire wire. The test certificate of the Mandel and Tonsberg shackle. The deployment and the inspection record of the mooring ropes. The location, number and details of the wires, tails and ropes should be clearly recorded and marked accordingly. These observations are documented along with other observations at the concluding meeting of the inspection. Brake testing procedure is an important aspect of the maintenance of mooring equipments on board. This procedure is described herewith in detail. The mooring winch brakes are designed to withstand certain amount of load called the brake holding capacity, often expressed in a unit of tons. Hence the mooring winch brakes are set to a point called the brake rendering point. The brakes are normally set to render at 60% of the MBL of the rope that is wound on the winch. The value of 60% of the MBL 
is extracted from the test certificate of the rope. Let us take an example of mooring rope having an MBL of 75 tons. 60% of 75 tons is 45 tons, or 45,000 kilograms. The brake testing kit is assembled at the mooring winch on the forecastle. The kit is rigged as per instructions of the kit manufacturer. The objective is to calculate the pressure that will be built up using the hydraulic jack and then to adjust the setting of the brakes to render at that pressure. The formula to use for calculating this pressure is BHC or brake holding capacity is equal to force F applied multiplied by R1 and the multiple divided by R2. R1 is the lateral distance from the center of the base of the hydraulic jack to the coaxial center of the mooring winch drum. R2 is sum of the radius of the winch drum and the first layer of the mooring wire wound around it. The force F is further calculated by multiplying the jack pressure P with the base area S of the hydraulic jack. Let us now rearrange the formula to get to our desired objective of calculating the hydraulic jack pressure. Now, by inserting the values, the required jack pressure is 435 kilograms per centimeter square for setting the brake band to render at 45 tons rendering point. The above is for a split winch whereby the first layer is considered. However, for an undivided winch, the third layer will be used for calculations, thus changing the value of R2. This in turn will change the required jack pressure to 543 kilograms per centimeter square. This pressure is now applied using the hydraulic jack, keeping the brake lever tight. On reaching the rendering pressure, the brake lever is adjusted just enough to allow the winch to render, which is detected by the sudden drop in the jack pressure and slight movement of the rope drum. This position of the brake lever is now marked using a cable tie or any other means to indicate the maximum position the lever is to be tightened for that mooring rope. The provision of a stopper arrangement, such as a locking nut on the threaded end, is not acceptable. All the personnel involved in mooring operations are now made aware of this marking, beyond which the brake lever is not to be tightened, and same marked on the winch. The certificate is then prepared and filed for reference during inspections. The validity of this procedure is for one year unless any repair is carried out on the brakes whereby the brakes will need to be tested again. <laughs>